Hey guys, Metal Sash here, and today I am bringing you a video of the new project I have been working on. Um, the best way that I could uh, describe this project is kind of like uh, Lemmings. If you've ever heard of Lemmings, it's just uh, a bunch of uh, little things that you can, you don't really control. You tell a couple of them commands to do and they can go about doing them and they're very stupid and that's what I wanted to kind of come up with is something where uh, there's objects in the world that you can modify or tell things to do and they will do them but only to the extent that they're told so they don't they don't think by themselves you have to tell them everything to do uh, so like you can select all the different objects in the game um, the first way that I thought of commanding the different objects was to actually have scripts attached to them and you could click on the script and then modify its text to execute different commands. Uh, the first couple of problems that kind of came up was, well, what if somebody doesn't really know how to program? That kind of, you know, that makes it, that doesn't make it very fun. And uh, also, um, you know, what if I, uh, oh yeah, it wasn't, uh, it was that trying to edit, um, scripts with Unity while in game, I had no idea how to do that. I kept looking around trying to find out different ways of how to do it, and it just wasn't working. So I ap opted to, uh, change editing scripts themselves to creating built in, uh, scripts that, are doing very simple things. They're not super simple though, uh, but they can execute those actions that you tell them to. And so then I can also limit uh, the objects to uh, do certain do the things that I want them to. So they don't just like you can't just if you know the certain command to just win the game. Well, that's kind of uh, it's kind of a fail if that if that happened. Um, also. Uh, these, just to say one quick thing, these are not my textures. Uh, I downloaded the uh, Nobiax texture pack, uh, all five of them, and I love them so far. They are amazing textures. Uh, and this is a pro the from the prototype texture pack that I showcased that on one of my videos. Uh, I'm just using that on the cylinder right now, or the that's not really a cylinder. I don't, I don't even, I can't remember what shape that is, but whatever. Uh, so you can see uh, you have we have four selectable objects in the game and they all have a uh, if you, it adds a, um, a mission material to it where you can a you can actually add multiple materials in unity and I actually never knew that uh, when you did that it um, actually overlays them so you can actually see both of them uh, you can see the prototype texture on there along with the emission texture or emission material so um, I had to actually modify two different uh, shaders to get that to work. And if you've ever used shaders, they're very annoying. Uh, I I still don't know how to use them properly, or at least code uh, my own shaders. Uh, that's like its own dark art that nobody really knows how to do. Uh, so if you click on the different um, objects, they pop up with different commands over here. Uh, these right here are just... Uh, Order or ordering the different commands so you can move them up, down, and you can also delete the command. So if we take, say, this object and we give it a rotate action and we rotate it 90 degrees in the positive direction, which will rotate it clockwise, uh, and I play that, it's going to rotate it 90 degrees and then stop because that's all it was told to do. Uh, now, if I go back with my time controls down here, I have restart, reset previous play and pause and all those do just about what you think they'll do so if I add a move command to the already uh, list of command where it rotates 90 degrees and play that it's going to rotate 90 degrees and then move 50 clicks uh, now it's really nice that I set up where each of these uh, 2 by 2 boxes is 50 uh, 50 units long and wide so uh, you can easily see where um, about where your unit's going to end up. So 
we look here, he should end up right about here. And that's pretty dang exact. Um, you know, it's off just a little bit, but it's not that bad. Um, but the basics, basic of the game, or the story of the game that I've kind of come up with is it's a um, production yard or factory and all of these objects are robots or machines that haven't been told c what commands to do or how to become automated so you're going to set up the automated commands that the uh, machines are then going to uh, memorize and then complete so uh, you know you're kind of acting as the foreman and this is why I kind of came up with um, you're this you're in the you're gonna be in this like little crane bubble at the top of the uh, roof where you can't actually fly through the level but you can go up and down and then kind of fly through it because I wanted it um where you know you it kind of had a purpose or a feel to it and before I had a fly around camera it just didn't feel like well, where did the player have the ability to fly around? I mean, I guess you can just say he can, but that's not that fun to just say the player can do this. Uh, so, uh, the these little um, little kind of they're kind of like players in themselves. These little tiny objects they're called editable script objects because I had them differently named. Um, I'm probably going to have unique names so that you can tell each one apart uh, when you're selecting it. Even though it does have a selection material on it, it does kind of, it's kind of difficult at times to tell which one you have selected sometimes. So uh, these platforms have um, what are called state changers. Uh, I might change this name because it, it's kind of, it's a long name or it doesn't really makes sense. Uh, I might call it transformation because it is transforming it from one point to the other. Uh, what these do is you can set up uh, points within the world and then feed these points to the state changer uh, on the object and you can set up like as many points as you want so you can change its state all the way from like whatever range that you have right now it's at the zero state so I want to change it to the uh, to state one and the platform is going to move this object according to the uh, this position and rotation so it's gonna move it around the center of the platform and up and down now if I take this and rotate it that way and then move it 50 and since it's off just a little bit it'll end up like here we can move it an additional like 20 and it should end up about center on the platform so it's ended up about center so then I can select the platform and move it to its second state and it moves the uh, object according to the position of it and when it stops it stops uh, I can reset that and now I all the objects res uh, maintain their actions. Uh, I haven't added the weights or the automatic weights into the objects that sit there um, yet. So when you when you reset it all and then play it, it's not going to end up uh, exactly like what it should be. Uh, so those are little things that I need to work on that make a big difference. Uh, so there really isn't much more uh, into this game uh, I haven't thought of a name yet I kind of thought of like Code Phonics the first time I made this as like a programming tutorial game but it changed into a whole different thing so that and it's kind of a really like kitty name uh, so if you guys can think of any name or whatever uh, post it in the comments below um, I might be doing some other update videos just to show you guys what I've done on this. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do any tutorial videos because the RTS videos are enough tutorial videos that, uh, that I need to manage. So uh, that's about it guys. Uh, if you like this video, leave a like. Um, if you
you have a question or a comment below, uh, that's about it. So uh, see you guys later. Bye.